Hello, my name is Yvette, and um, welcome to this week's Friday Report. Um, we don't often uh, do Friday Report out in this lecture theatre, and sometimes when we're in here it feels like it's echoing because uh, there aren't as many of us here as uh, when we're in the Gledhall Elizabeth Hall. However, I'm really pleased to welcome my guest today, who is uh, Dr. Keith Gerling, who is the medical director of Nottingham University Hospitals, who has spent the morning with us and had a little bit of giving him a bit of a tour as well, and um, learning a little bit more about the needs improvement methods. So welcome, Keith. Um, today's report out, uh, we've got um, a team from my own uh, value stream, the Acute General Surgical Admissions, and um, this is this team's first Kaizen event, or this value stream's first Kaizen event. I think it's actually the third Kaizen event we've held within the Trust, and a, a couple of the other value streams have had them. Um, so it's really good for us to hear about what we achieve in a shorter space of time, um, and with, a, with probably a slightly smaller team. But also, really pleased to say that um, the team lead this week is, is Rachel, Rachel Jenkins, um, and um, from, from theatres. And Rachel, you are one of our Lean for Leaders graduates, and you, um, this is your first experience of leading a team. So I hope that's been not too traumatic for you, and <laughs> quite exciting, but also that meant you did all the observations um, prior to this um, Kaiser event. So, um, so uh, welcome now to the team and um, I think we're ready to hear your report now. Thanks Yvette. Hello, my name is Sophie Williams. I'm a KPO specialist and coach, KPO coach for this fantastic team this week. It's been a pleasure for our three, first three-day Kaizen event to coach Rachel and the team through their work. They're going to tell you all about it now. So, hello, my name's Rachel Jenkins. I'm the team leader for Acute and Obstetric Theatres here at St James's, and I was the team leader for this Kaizen event. So, regarding the project form, we were looking at the current state of the acute surgical booking process. So we looked at the process flow of completing a booking form for a patient requiring surgery. We looked at the completion of the booking form to the inf information being transferred to the acute, book, uh, acute board. The issues that were raised were that we had incomplete fields on the booking form and that patients were not admitted um, onto the ward, delaying patient information being transformed, uh, transferred onto our informatic uh, process which is TMS um, and also patients being booked for the previous day. The Targus pro Progress Report, from that we got three reports that we were looking at. Two were quality reports, the first one being variation in information to equal booking forms, the second one were being unable to input booking form uh, due to no TCI admission onto the ward. The third part of this was the environmental part, and we were looking at 5S in the acute board. The tack time was from our service. It's a 24-hour service, and um, to get the information, um, we looked at how many patients or booking forms were completed over a, a month's period, and from that, we got a medium of 13 patients were averagely being booked per day. Each booking from that information gave a tack time of 110 minutes. We got some feedback from the staff prior to the event and the feedback that were given that the main issues that they saw was with the actual booking process. Hello, my name's Emily. I'm the General Manager for Abdominal Medicine and Surgery and I'm also the sponsor for this Kaizen event. Um, this is the first time I was involved in the Kaizen event and also my first time of being sponsor, so it was a real learning experience for me and I'm really grateful to have such a wonderful team to work with. Um, my sponsor challenge to the team was twofold. So on one hand, we decided that we wanted to really understand 
the reasons behind the variations in process that Rachel's described. And for that, I gave the team an elephant. And what I asked them to do as part of my sponsor challenge, it's really cute, is to name the elephant. So what we wanted to do is talk about those issues, not in a personal way, not in a way that involves blame, but just in being really honest and identifying some of the underlying factors in a way that helped us to resolve them. Um, the second part of the challenge right, so I set the team was to try and understand how to standardise some of the factors that influence the TAC time um, and I allowed the team to choose what factors they thought were most important for standardisation during the week. Hello, my name's Claire Hutton. I'm team leader for Colorectal Urology and Breast Theatres at St James and my role was process owner. So on the board, you've got a value stream map, um, which shows the process from a surgeon booking a patient onto a booking form, and that information being transcribed onto our acute workload board in the acute theatres. Um, as you can see above, there's six um, Kaizen bursts that identify issues along that process. Um, so what we were doing, we were going to look at those um, problems and see what we could address. Um, the next stage was, so basically this shows two people involved in the booking process, the first being the surgeon, so the clinician comes to the desk, they fill out form and that information is then passed to the coordinator. So the audits that we did over the last four weeks showed um, on the booking forms there was quite a lot of information omitted, there was a lot of it, um, it was illegible and some of it was inaccurate. So part of the coordinator role was to address those, um, mistake proof the form so that they could be uploaded and put onto our TMS system in a timely manner. Um, when we looked at this, um, we decided to go to look at some team ideas of how we could um, address these issues. Um, and collectively we agreed that the booking forms was a, a bit of a bone of contention and why were we asking the clinicians to come to us to book when actually we could take the forms to them? And it was Nazira's epiphany um, who said, do you know what, take, take the forms to the, to the wards, which was a great idea. So the PDS cycle started where we took the forms to the ward, we um, shared that information with everybody, why we were doing it. It meant that when they booked the patient, all the information was there. So fasting information, blood information, um, what they were having and doing it with the patient so we interacted better with the patient to make sure that they understood what we were doing our information was correct so when we took the farm back to the acute desk we weren't distracting the coordinator we weren't creating a noise which can be very distracting um, we were making that that um, process more fluid and it was accurate information for the um, coordinator and also we produced these packs so in the packs a little bit more we moved on we put a consent form a correct site surgery and a booking form together so everything's together for that clinician so it worked out and they, they quite liked it so far um, so the new state that we've got now is um, for the value stream is we've removed five of those Kaizen bursts which was phenomenal and what that did it increased compliance it increased accuracy and it reduced booking time of the actual process of booking the noise and distraction that we talked about which is when mistakes generally happen and also the um, need for the coordinator to mistake proof um, errors so when we move forward we're talking about a future action plan that we're going to do over the next 30 60 90 days and we call that the newspaper and we picked three so the first one is to audit the booking forms for the next 30, 60, 90 days and report out on those. We have got uh, potentially some of that is going to be digital, so that will make that process really easy for us. The second is to implement a metric um, into it, so TCI times, um, and that will be done. We will do more timed observations with Rachel and the team to make sure that we are TCIing, and we are doing some work with Emily and AMS about pr providing a virtual ward, which should help with that. And the third is um, the work that Dan's done on the workload board um, to 5S the board, and we would use the uh, measurement grid. Um, and we will come to report out every 30, 60, 90 days and let you know how we're doing. Hello, my name's Nasira, um, and I am a, a colorectal surgeon, um, but I'm also spending a year as a clinical leadership fellow, and I'm a team member within this uh, Kaizen event. 
Um, so following on with the work done by placement of the booking form, as a team we collectively felt that the completion of the form may actually still vary. Um, although in the first PDSA cycle we felt by leaving the booking form in the, in, the, you know, in the correct clinical areas would lead to better completion and compliance, we did ask ourselves whether that would actually be of a standard level. We thereby uh, adapted our PDSA cycle and that was to include standardisation of actual completion of the form and then to leave an example within all clinical areas. I personally felt this task was and should and would be straightforward. Um, but on attempting to complete the form, surprisingly, it took us all four attempts to get it correct and to a standard that we all approved of. And this is all by a team who are very familiar of being in the surgical areas and dealing with these forms on a daily basis. So we all thought as a team it had been a really worthwhile exercise because it demonstrated to us that standards need to be put in place. And we've now since put, made that very laminated and pretty and left it in clinical areas for the clinicians to refer to. Um, I think what we need to demonstrate here is the details on the form and whilst we shouldn't we shouldn't play it down. They may seem simple, just as the time the patient has last eaten, abnormal blood results and the patient ward. These are essential details for patients to be transferred onto the theatre IT system. One thing I must mention is that disseminating and relaying the information of the new changes to the home team um, was somewhat challenging. This information had to be delivered on a multi-specialty, multi-ward level, and that was to doctors of all grades. Um, I think a lesson learned for me in that was to provide, was really learning to provide and sharing of information had to be better to, you know, across all CSUs. We are currently creating a team agreement so that all clinicians across all CSUs will follow the standard process and ultimately improve patient flow to theatre. Um, we've since then got patient uh, staff to quote, um, just some feedback really from their response from the work that we've done. And overall, generally, uh, particularly from the junior doctors, it's been received really well. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dan. I'm an ODP from the Acute and Obstetric Theatres. Uh, and for the Kaizen event, I'm a team member. Uh, I'm going to talk about how we 5S the Acute Productivity Board. Um, the, the Acute Productivity Board was introduced a little over 12 months ago and it was initially used as a tool to communicate work streams to the acute and obstetric team uh, and it was initially received really well. However, what we have noticed is that the several key bits of information were underutilised and that limited the overall impact and potential of the board. Um, so one area that was um, highlighted was emergency codes. Um, incidentally, these emergency codes were um, picked up from a trip to Nottingham. <laughs> <laughs> so urgency go codes give us a, quanti a quantifiable time frame for a case to be done. However, the acute and obstetric board omitted uh, a booking time given us no measurable time scale. Okay, so to counter that, we introduced a booking time. And along with this, we introduced a traffic light warning system, again, from Nottingham. Um, this goes from green, yellow to red. Uh, we've also introduced an urgency code um, breach key, um, which lets us um, measure how we uh, go forward with those. Uh, and highlights potential breach cases. We also produce an escalation process for the traffic light warning system. Um, we change the semantics of some of the columns to better reflect the needs and flows uh, and, and patient flow. Uh, Post-op destination was added. Uh, outstanding in investigations uh, was included with the aim of minimising disruption and giving the co coordinator a visual reminder to uh, follow up or chase outstanding information. This can have a huge impact on workflow and patient experience. Potential issues was also given provenance, again to highlight unusual cases or special considerations to each procedure. Highlighting allergies, for instance, can have a huge impact on flow, as can starving of patients on patient experience. Further aesthetic changes were made through um, home team input Initial feedback from the MDT has been positive. 
going forward, we're going to uh, produce a standard process description, and this will be pro uh, produced in alignment with a team agreement. So, to set the scene with the results um, that were initially found after the seven observations, determined that we had a lead time of 45 minutes and a processing time of five minutes. This resulted in 10% of value added and 90% of non-value added to this value stream. So after testing and re-measuring, um, we had a zero defect for the quality measures that we were testing, and we are nearly at level two on the levels of achievement grid with our 5S work. We require a team agreement for this to be completed, which is currently under development. So the current work stream is now at zero non-value added and 100% value added. So the team have, we've learned lots this week. We've um, <coughs> had a rapid, and an RPIW is rapid. We have five days, but we have three days. Well, not even three days, is it? It's two, really, mm -hmm. and a bit. Um, of rapid PDSA um, and so I think each of us wanted to talk about what our lessons um, were. Dan, do you want to go first because I think yours is up there. Yeah. <coughs> um, so mine is the first one on here and it's not wasting time on overthinking. I think I've been guilty in the past of overthinking an idea, meaning it's <coughs> off the ground. Um, this was really good focusing and getting us through the work and actual to some sort of end product. Thanks, Sam. So my lesson learnt was the second on the list, which is simplest ideas have biggest impact. And I left acute theatre in April this year and worked for 10 years in the acute theatre and was always told, no, the, acute, the, the booking farms live here. And I never questioned it and I never challenged it. And the simplest thing has had a massive impact. Um, I think for me, it's been um, the sharing of information. Um, it's part of our respectful behaviours. It's part of our leads way. And I think there shouldn't be that fear to be able to do that. And I think particularly across, and I have to commend sort of my, my colleagues within other specialties during these two days, the gynecologists as well, who've been really engaging with the work that's been done. Uh, and I think we need to congratulate them, you know, as a, as a surgical team, really, um, and to feel that we can be open enough to, to speak and share all, all, all thoughts so we can all benefit from that. And mine are the next two so sharing is caring and respectful of each other <coughs> and on the gemba so it was imperative that we went back and got feedback from the staff on the shop floor and that be respectful that it's a working area and that we were still providing a safe environment for our staff to provide that service on i added the style of working bit because as nisera described <coughs> across all csus we said um, the scope was small for this, being an acute workload board, but actually the learning for us and for KPO was um, acute general surgery. General surgery is huge, so all the special the, 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 the surgeries that fall in that, I, I hadn't appreciated how, um, how far and how wide that was going to travel and that, fa that form was, was going to be used by so many people. But often in our, in, in our world, we have to get on with the job, so we, we, we know we're time pressured and the, this team this week trying testing and really trying to um, make things better for patients and staff, we just need your help sometimes. Have us, have us take a step back and think, actually, are we just trying to improve the work? Okay, and, and, and you know, try not to stick to your silos and where you, you think um, my little bit's important and it's tough to do but we'd appreciate it so i'd like to thank everybody every department that's been involved in this everybody who's allowed staff to have that time out to be able to either be part of the team or being able to speak to the team and just thank you for such an amazing team you made it an enjoyable three days it's just been amazing thank you so much Rachel, you've been amazing as well, by the way, so I think she needs a round of applause. That was brilliant. I can't 
believe that you've actually only been working on this book since Wednesday morning, and as you can tell, it's only Friday lunchtime, so I've only had really a couple of days. Um, we'll, shall we take some questions now? Um, because yeah. the, the, we've just got some certificates to give out in a moment, but it, it's a brilliant job, well done. So come and stand this side of the desk so that we can see. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, have we got some questions for the team or comments? Hello, I, do you know, hi, hi. It's Lindsay, Lindsay. Hello. I've just got a comment for the team. I think um, one of the things that I was really impressed with was the collaboration between the two CSUs. Often our patients do move across a journey through different CSUs, and it's so lovely to see both teams working really hard together to make it more seamless. So, well done. I absolutely agree. Andy, any, any comments from you? Yeah. So Andy's one of our acute general surgeons, well, pancreatic surgeons that lead for acute surgery and also part of our values response team. Yeah, really great work. Um, when are we going to move from paper format for this form to digital format? Hopefully next week. We weren't expecting We've got to make sure the form's right. So, mm -hmm. just as you all know, um, we um, we like to make sure and give that form, a paper form, a bit of testing before we absolutely digitalise it because it takes a lot longer than to change it after it's been digitalised. Dave, I mean it's obviously fresh off the block, but do you have plans? Do you do to discuss with your colleagues for the other acute theatre over the old journal? I've already been in touch actually with us. Um, they've already contacted Rachel and myself um, about our um, rag rating as well and how we um, deal with patients that for the next day. So that is something that we're working down there with as well. Lisa. I just want to say how impressed I am in such a short space of time how much that you've done. And I'd be really interested to hear him say as this progresses and the real impact that you've made some suggestions on patient experience, but I'd like to understand more about that, so really would welcome the discussion with you about that impact as you, as you learn more. Okay. John, you know, as an anaesthetist, any, any comments well, or questions? It's got to be welcome, and it's a fantastic bit of work in such a short period of time. What, what were the biggest barriers that you encountered over the last couple of days? What was the most challenging thing for you? This all seems to have gone very smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> so it must have been something that was particularly challenging. I mean, I, I think one definite key learning for me was that um, being a member of the Kaizen event, um, I sort of came into it this week knowing the plans, but mm -hmm. I hadn't actually shared that information with the surgical team. And whilst theatre had been, the, the Rachel and Claire had worked really hard in their pre-planning with Emily, to get that information disseminated, theatres were expecting the you know changes to be made or something to be implemented. So perhaps I, looking back now, would have shared that information much better with the surgeons because trying to get them to do that during their busy on-call period whilst they're working on top of everything else and trying to say, actually, would you mind just... And whilst people were obliging, it, I think that just may have just been a little bit excessive so so perhaps for me the learning from that would be just to be better so that was that that was that was a challenge I think um, all I'd add to that is a very self-deprecating comment from this era I mean it's, it's it's really good to have that insight and learning ways we can do better but I would say the time pressure for this team doing what they've done in two days and managing those relationships and keeping those bonds going and getting staff on board is just a testament to the people skills and leadership skills of the people who are in the team for this Kaiser event because it's really challenging isn't it to take staff through any change process and to do it in 48 hours you know it really puts the pressure on so I think you've done a great job. I absolutely agree. Helen? I just wanted to say thank you to you Dan because you used the word starving rather than fasting and I think sometimes our language minimises the impact of what we're doing with patients so keep doing that. Yeah, I think semantics are important aren't they sometimes? Bella Lynn leader as well, <laughs> recruited to the uh, <laughs> <laughs> It and evolved it again, and it's just fantastic. I think for me, it's, it's something about 
I mean, Rachel and Claire, particularly in theatres, you, you big advocates for, for the lead leaders and the lead improvement effort, and actually now it's time to bring in others in, in, in those areas. How are, we, how are we going to use you as role models for what can be achieved using this process within our theatre areas? Um, just from the achievements that yeah. we've got. For, for the past two days, it's been amazing, and people in theatre have been amazing, but we've been, and what about this, and what about this, and what about this, and actually it's not about us fixing that or doing it, it's about saying, well, what are you going to do, and how are you going to do it, and how can I help you do that? And I think that's very much how Rachel and I work anyway, that's our ethos, so it's just about spreading that around a bit more, and, and taking, and, and we, we are lean for leaders and that's, that's something that we both wanted to do and then removing the, there's a bit of stigma around it a little bit and just to remove that by just saying we're just ordinary workers, we do a great job every day, we come to work but actually you can impact the, and what's around you and not to be too scared of change, I like change but I'm a bit weird, so for some people it's, it, it's difficult so we've just got to support that really. Please. Uh, assess the fact you had 90% no added value and you absolutely removed it all. Do, when you reflect on that, could you see that no added value or was it the numbers and the figures that helped you see it to get rid of it? You could feel it all every day. You could feel it. It's people, when we coordinate on that desk, it's a daily challenge and it's, and it's difficult and it's stressful and it's time consuming and it takes away the expertise that we need to, to make our patients have a positive and safe experience. So actually, it added no value to anybody, clinicians, um, staff working in and patients. So yeah, it, and, and we felt it this yeah. morning, particularly when we went down, and the coordinator was, was she was, um, she'd been, somebody came down to book at the desk and she went, oh no, 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 go back to the board and do it properly and come back. This patient wasn't urgent, this patient was able to come this afternoon. And she actually is taking it on and she said no, because she's busy doing, getting some patients ready for theatre. So the ethos is then, it's, you know, obviously if it's an emergency, we, we, we're appropriate, but where we can be, we should be doing it properly. So I'm interested to know, is it the fact that you've been able to take to get numbers and information and label it as no added value that's then helped you change that? Yeah, so the, from the observations that we've done and the information that we get gathered since this PDSA, it just it, it reflects what Claire's saying. We've got numbers actually now saying from the charts that we've provided by taking that step out with the uh, surgeon coming with the fill, form already filled in, we're already saving part of that journey and process. Mm -hmm. So at least the first three cycle boxes in the journey now are, uh, uh, don't actually even happen anymore. So. Removed three of the processing boxes, yeah. The only, the only part that's left that we couldn't deal with, and it was a bit frustrating, I think we nearly cracked it last night, but we've had to just pause. <laughs> um, yeah, um, was the bar having the virtual ward, but it is something that we spoke to Lindsay upon SAU and Emily, and it is, it is in process, it is something that's been developed, and it's the last bit of the puzzle. We haven't quite got it, but we've got everything in place to just enable that, so then that will re reduce the time I mean. massively. Is that the patients that go home to so, come so back? Yeah, these are the patients that we identify need surgery but can come back the next day, so we don't admit them that day. So, but rather than have them as a, a second attender, we can put them into a virtual ward, then they come back and we pick them up the next day. So they're actually in our, in our system and in our process. And at the minute they're not, they're basically a piece of paper in a folder, which is not safe or... Um, more professional. Well, sometimes I think they're on the bottom of the SAU list as well. Yeah. Right. Brilliant. Last question, and, and I'm sorry Rachel, it's for you, but um, could you just say a little bit about the, the time that you had to spend preparing for the Kaizen event? Because I think we want to encourage other people who have completed Lean for Leaders to feel um, that they can team lead. And so yeah, it was a bit overwhelming at first to be the team leader um, and to actually process what I needed to put into that as part of the observations and things that I had to do. But I think it's one of our mental values. I thought, oh my God, I can't do this. 
but actually you can. So it, it's with the support of Sophie, our coach, it's, it's been quite an easy process and enjoyable. I've enjoyed all of the aspects of it because she has made it quite easy and it's not a lot of time. It's just the time out to be able to perform the observation <coughs> tasks. And also, because I know that area, it, it's slightly easier for me rather than from the KPO team coming in to do the observation. I know and when the best times is to be at that space to get them timings. And I know what times to call back, so it, it sort of relates to my job as well. And I, honestly, if I'd paid you to say... <laughs> day report out. So <laughs> please please have a seat, although some of you will be standing up again quite quickly. Um, so um, the next part of our agenda is to, um, to celebrate and award certificates to our, first of all, our Lean for Leaders. And our first Lean for Leaders certificate is to Rachel. So, <laughs> There you go, and I think you've got photography already. You got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well done. Okay. And then the next one is Claire. <laughs> So, and another one. Oh. Now, Diane, we're going to do you next. After. We're going to get Jonathan next because we just had a slight uh, technical hitch. <laughs> and, and the elephant in the room has fallen off the table. So, our, um, our next certificate is actually for advanced lead training. Um, and I'm to award this to Jonathan uh, Lockwood, who is our uh, general manager of the Outstanding Leeds Centre Institute. Thank you very much. Yeah. Who's, who's got a camera? Dave's got one. We, we'll, we'll just about that. <laughs> Usually I do the photograph, don't I, mean, Julie? You're still talking about me. Can you hear you? So, so we're just going to ask Jonathan to say a little bit about advanced lean training. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I did the advanced lean training rather than uh, lean for leaders, although I am going on to do lean for leaders afterwards. So, uh, although the title suggests that it is maybe a step beyond this, uh, a different, uh, different philosophy. So, it's a, a management philosophy rather than a leadership philosophy. So, it's giving me some tools, and um, the, the biggest package was the standard, app, standard ops package, which you will have done as part of your lead for leaders as well, but it's all about going to, to the Gemba or the workplace uh, and observing what actually goes on. And I think that's my biggest learning is what, what I think goes on as a manager often isn't the reality. It's not what happens when you get on the Gemba and you, and you see it. Um, I, I did, well, I started my advanced lead training in theatre, so I started, started it with the uh, loan kit as, um, as my value stream. Now, naively, I thought loan kit is loan kit. Um, and you know, it's all the same, isn't it? Really? Like, you all order the same, but it's not, it's really not. Um, you know, you can have implants, you can have bespoke implants, you can have patient specific implants, you can have instrumentation, you can have equipment. There's a whole raft of stuff that we learn in that all require a slightly different sterilisation process, or no sterilisation, or procurement, or whatever. Um, and, and one of the things that I learned is that the value was going into the, into the game, but observing and, and actually figuring out what happens and what, what, what the staff do. Um, some of the barriers um, that I had were engaging everybody, um, engaging some of the surgeons who um, didn't want to change the way that they'd done it. They were happy with just sending an email. They were happy with um, organising it the day before, causing the team leaders and whoever a huge headache to try and get that kit in. Um, and, that, and that was the most difficult part. And then actually making some changes and people not realising that you'd done that. Like how do you communicate the changes that, that you've made? 
and um, just we, we brought a, a low kit coordinator in, so a brand new member of staff, but not everyone knew that we brought a low kit coordinator in. Um, and then, you know, people were still trying to do the old process while we were trying to run the new process, and that was a um, particular bit of, of my learning. And going on to the, uh, the future, um, started module four last Monday with um, Helen and um, and uh, as my role as general manager, I'm going to look at bringing in the, the daily management philosophy uh, into LDI and the use of production boards for our, our booking teams um, and uh, yeah, and beyond, module 5 and 6, whatever that, that brings from it. So, that's it. Well done. I know Claire and Rachel have already spoken. Diane, do you want to say anything <laughs> what you, um, about your Lean for Leaders experience? Oh gosh. Um, Has it changed your life? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was really good. It was hard work to really commit to um, getting the work done and getting out there. And, you know, lots of priorities, conflicting priorities. It was really good. Me, I had to work with Jonathan initially, so that was across um, MDT piece of work, which was really successful and is still ongoing now. We've got some really good results from our own FEMA pathway. To the more simple things, five S in our star rooms, and we've done an amnesty across our CSU with our star rooms. We've had lots of bits of our star. So, yeah, and then picking and choosing, once you've done the full cars, you can then pick and choose the tools that are going to work for you. And I had some great support from Sophie within our own production model. Very good. Enjoyed it. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. So, does anybody have any other questions um, for anybody? A comment rather than a, a, a question. Is how much? That sorry, Tony Cronshaw, patient partner with the KPO team. Um, this week, I was uh, fulfilling the role of an advisor to, to the team, and I want to thank them uh, particularly for the way in which they welcomed me yesterday. Uh, but also, I want to thank them for the insights that I gained in that into the <coughs> overarching issue of the entire value stream. Because I could see how what they were doing yesterday fitted into the whole of this issue of the uh, acute surgical admissions. I mean, yet it was only a small little bit, but my mind was going through backwards to things that we've already covered in. RPI volume 1, 2 and 3, and it was going forward into how this affects RPI volume 4. And it was very, very real, so I want to thank you for that. But just to say, this was, it's, it's not an isolated thing, it's part of a much bigger thing. Mm -hmm. And it's all about getting the thing leaner, yeah. and about getting the thing better. Yeah. So thank you. Thanks very much, Tony. We're, we're very grateful for your time, I've ever, so. So thank you very much everybody, that concludes Friday's report out and um, we will reconvene, is it next week or is it, I think it might be the week after because I think, we've got next week I think it's half term next week with lots of people away and so, um, so we'll see you in a fortnight. Thank you very much.